that when you take the approach that God has created us, that God even knows the very hair, the number of the hairs on your head, as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 29, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye have more value than many sparrows. When we understand that God has, has formed and fashioned us and created us and created our bodies incredibly complex and, and with lots of systems involved to, to help us to get through our environment and, and handle disease. And, and there's so many mechanisms built into our body, amazingly created to get us through this life. That we don't have an inept God, a God that didn't really know how to make us. That when we have that mindset going into our health, as opposed to an opposing view that says we all came here by chance and that there is no God and that we just kind of evolved over time and the survival of the fittest is, is the model that you're acting under in that there's some th organs that we have that they're vestigial organs and they don't really serve a purpose. So we could just get rid of them and cut those out of your body because the evolutionary process is just hasn't finished with that yet. So you see, there's two very completely different opposing views. And just because one person wants to call this science doesn't make it right. The Bible warns us about science falsely so-called, that there are plenty of people out there that are going to claim the name of science, but it's not real science because it's not true. It's not legitimate. And uh, I could go on and on about that subject, but there are a lot of lies out there in textbooks and there's things that are just patently false that, that are being pushed for various agendas. But um, I'm not going to dig too far into that. Uh, just one real simple example of this, and, and I'll, I'll read for you. We read in Matthew 5, look down at verse number 44. Because the Bible says that God makes his reign to fall on the just and on the unjust. It says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. This is God telling us, hey, don't just be good to your friends, you know, love your enemies. And the reason why, it says in verse 45, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God loves his creation in general. Not just those that are born again, child, children of God, that are believers on him. He takes care of and will provide for, and he sends his rain on the just and on the unjust. Yes, there are times when God's going to bring his judgment, he's going to punish people, and he's going to destroy the wicked. But... He's giving everybody, all of humanity, provision and providing for them. He's making sure that the rain's falling and people are kind of taken care of and fed. And when we know that we have a Father in heaven that does these things, we know these to be fundamental truths. We see that God has provided for all of, of creation. He's the creator. We don't believe that God was so inept, especially when it comes to things like procreation, just continuing to survive as a human race on this earth that it just requires all these surgeries and everything's just extremely complicated and you need to get a professional in order you know, to do just to, to have the most basic things done in this life. 